Hello everybody, I hope uh, you're all doing well. I'm uh, back with a problem on um, rigid body kinematics. I already have the problem drawn so that we're not going to waste uh, time on that. Uh, but here is the problem, okay? Uh, so in this problem, I have three links, uh, bars AD, AB, and BC, okay? So three bars or three links, okay? Uh, links or bars, I have them as uh, AB, AD and then BC okay uh, then uh, I see that at uh, the point C uh, I have uh, a pin here which fixes uh, the motion of point C so point C is a fixed point okay so that's the first thing and then point C is a fixed point okay uh, those are the two things that are quite obvious from the figure itself and uh, what I'm seeing further or what I'm told further is this the bar AD or the link AD is uh, translating at a constant acceleration so given that the bar AD is uh, translating at a constant acceleration let's call that as acceleration A okay and uh, it is quite obvious to see that you know those two rollers are here and uh, they're going to prevent uh, the bar ad from uh, traveling at an angle okay so these are uh, uh, two rollers here okay and uh, we're not interested in the motion of the roller as such i'm interested only in the bars uh, ad ab and bc okay uh, so that's one thing that you're told uh, the other thing is that um, um, the distance uh, between point C and point A is some distance X at some arbitrary point in time. So, okay, so at some time T distance between A and C is X. Okay, and then you're also told that uh, when time T is equal to zero, then this distance was equal to zero. Okay, when time t is equal to zero the distance x was equal to zero and also the velocity of a was equal to zero okay so which means that a started with some uh, uh, zero initial uh, velocity okay the bar ad is translating at a constant acceleration a and what do i need to do here is the following so find the angular acceleration and velocity of the links a b and b c of uh, links uh, a b and b c and find the angular acceleration of links a b and b c i'm going to write them as omega a b and omega b c because it's a rigid body acceleration of any line on the rigid body is the same as the entire rigid body acceleration is the angular velocity angle and acceleration are properties of the rigid body okay so this is going to be alpha a b and then alpha b c and uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to find these angular quantities in terms of the following parameters okay um so find all the quantities above in terms of the parameters a x and b where b is the length of each link okay so that's important that uh, the link length is given to us so this length is equal to little b this length is also equal to little b okay and um, so that's the given information and uh, this is what we need to find okay so once again i'm just going to go to the problem and then uh, very quickly see uh, what is uh, told to us so i have these three bars ad ab and bc the bar AD, as you can very obviously see, is traveling along a straight line path. It's going in a horizontal direction only, and it's traveling at a constant acceleration of A. Okay, so that's given to us. 
then you are told that at, at any point in time the distance between the point A and the point C is x and then when the time t is equal to 0 the initial velocity of point A was uh, 0 at that instant in time okay so that's also given to us then uh, what are the things that I'm supposed to find I'm supposed to find the angular velocity of the links a b and b c which I have omega a b and omega b c angular acceleration alpha a b alpha b c I have to find all these quantities in terms of a x and b where x is the uh, length of each link okay so that's something that we need to find all right i'm going to copy this figure and i'm going to bring it down here so that uh, we keep tabs with uh, what's uh, going on i don't need these uh, things here my hope is i will be able to capture this figure without any extraneous details on it okay uh, so let me maybe bring it down to the next page because I have a few more things I want to do in this uh, previous uh, page. Now one thing uh, that you can realize is that if I have a rigid body translating at a constant, uh, translating, okay, so for a translating rigid body, for a rigid body that is in a pure translation, we know that the acceleration of all the points will be the same okay the velocity and uh, acceleration of all the points will be the same at every time instant okay and um, let me assume that the bar uh, a is uh, traveling <coughs> in the positive or right uh, right direction or the horizontal direction so let me assume that i'm told the acceleration of a is uh, pointed this way so let me draw that out here so acceleration of this link is directed this way okay so which means that i know the acceleration of a at any point in time to be pointing to the right okay so which means that the magnitude of acceleration of a is equal to the magnitude of acceleration of d is equal to a this is given okay this is magnitude uh, to set up the direction we first fix an inertial frame at some point c okay which is the fixed point that you have in the problem here okay or you can just keep it outside the window of the problem as well it doesn't make any difference to us so i can fix it at some point c or some point o uh, let me just do it at the point c okay so here is an inertial frame that i'm going to be drawing so i j and k are the unit vectors of that inertial frame k is the unit vector that is coming out of the page so this is i this is j and then this is k okay so which means that i have the triad okay because ijk is also a triad even though it is an inertial system it is still forming a triad okay so this is an inertial triad which means that it will not have an angular uh, velocity but i will still see that i cross j is equal to k and so on and so forth okay so that's something that i know which means immediately i can write the acceleration of a okay so acceleration of a is the same as the acceleration of d is going to be acceleration in the i direction okay as you can very well see here okay and uh, since uh, this point a is in uh, horizontal motion it is performing rectilinear motion okay point a and d are performing a rectilinear motion with a constant acceleration
right so what is my strategy my strategy is i'm looking at the information that is given to me and i'm trying to see okay how much of this can i start using before i actually go into the problem i'm told that some point is traveling with a constant acceleration along a straight line path it's obviously rectilinear motion if it is a rectilinear motion then i can make use of rectilinear motion equations right so rectilinear motion equations equation for constant um, acceleration right i can uh, find the velocity of the point a using the information given to me velocity of a v a square is equal to velocity of a at some point in time initially v a naught square plus two times the acceleration of a times x minus zero i know that the initial velocity of a is zero this was given to us in the problem okay which means that i'm essentially finding out that the magnitude of the velocity velocity of a is going to be square root of two times a times x okay and i know that this is traveling along a straight line path so it's act and it's not probably slowing down because it's accelerating so the velocity is always also going to be in the i direction okay so which implies that if i write it as a vector this is going to be magnitude times the unit vector okay so velocity of a is square root of 2 a x in the i direction okay so what we have found out so far based on information given okay we have found out that the velocity of point a is square root of 2 a x in the i direction then acceleration of point a is uh, acceleration in the i direction i can also find out uh, some more things right you can you can this, this is quite silly but but you will still see that what is the velocity of point c is zero acceleration of point c is also zero because it's a fixed point okay so since c is a fixed point the velocity of c is zero acceleration of c is zero okay so c is a fixed point okay so these are the things that we have found out so far uh, based on the information that is uh, given to us okay now i need to look at um, let's perform the velocity analysis let us try to find the angular velocity first okay so let us now uh, let us first do try to find angular velocity then find angular acceleration okay so that's my idea or my strategy and i'm going to bring my figure down from above okay with the triad and so on so all of these are going to come with me okay so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste this here okay and then i'm also going to keep the information that i have found out okay so this is all stuff that i have found out i'm going to keep it right on the side here okay so this is going to be traveling with me as an entourage as we solve the problem all right now many of you may be thinking hey why is this person not being smart and then saying okay hey if the length of the links are the same then the angular velocity of the links should be the same i may tell you okay that is possibly true but i don't want to let my intuition decide on that i want to let the math of the problem tell me whether i'm right or not okay so if that is the case here is what i'm going to do so i'm going to assume okay so assume omega a b omega b c alpha a b alpha b c to be in certain directions okay so that's what i'm going to assume i'm not going to assume that they're going to be the same let the math tell me let the problem solve it and then tell me hey dummy look the accelerations and the velocities are actually the same okay so i'm not going to assume that so i'm going to assume though one thing that the uh, velocity and accelerations are in the following direction so i'm going to assume 
this to be the direction this, which is quite obvious right because as i'm removing this link ad i'm going to see that this ab bar is going to rotate in the counterclockwise direction so i'm going to say this is the direction of omega ab and i'm also going to say it is the same as the direction of alpha ab okay so i'm going to say that those directions are the same i'm going to bring that down here and then as link ab is unfurling counterclockwise it's obvious that the link bc should be collapsing which means that I'm going to assume that this angular acceleration and angular velocity are clockwise. Okay, so I'm going to assume that this is going to be omega BC. And then I'm going to assume that this is going to be alpha BC clockwise. Okay, and the direction that is coming into or out of the page is the K direction. So which means that I'm going to assume the following. Okay, so omega AB is some unknown magnitude in the positive K. Omega BC is some unknown magnitude in the negative K. Alpha AB is some unknown magnitude in the positive K. And Alpha BC is some unknown magnitude in the negative K. Okay, so this is assumed. And it is not necessary that you assume them to be in positive or negative directions. You can assume them all to be positive and you can let the math dictate that as well. But I'm using a little amount of common sense, the little bit that I have left with me. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to make use of my velocity and acceleration equations. Okay, um, so first things first, I look at the bar AB. If I look at the bar AB, then the point A and the point B are points in the same body. And what, what is my hope? My hope is this. Okay, I don't know how to solve this problem. So how do I solve this problem? I'm just going to list out all the equations that are available to me. I look at velocity equations and hope that eventually this will lead me to some kind of a solution. Then I will look at the acceleration equations. This is my strategy for solving this problem. There is actually no strategy. Okay, I'm just using the equations as best as I can. Okay, so I look at the link AB. Okay, so the first thing that you notice is that points A and B are on the same body or link. Okay, which means that I can immediately say that velocity of uh, B slash A relative is equal to zero acceleration of b slash a relative is also equal to zero right this is very obviously seen okay then i bring in the general equation okay so general velocity and i'm doing the velocity analysis right so i'm doing only the velocity equation now so velocity of b is velocity of a plus velocity of b slash a relative and then omega of the body on which the point a is residing so this is going to be the body omega a b cross r b slash a okay so this is what i have and then i'm going to start doing the substitutions okay so what are the things i can see immediately that b b slash a relative is zero so i'm going to get rid of that then what else am i going to come up with uh, so I'm left with the following. So this is the general equation for the velocity analysis. And then I'm just trying to relate the velocity of B to the velocity of A. This is the equation that we have derived. Okay, the same equation I could also have written in the following manner. Okay. Could also have written, just, just to make, make sure that we understand this, I can say velocity of A is velocity of b plus velocity of a slash b relative plus omega of the body on which the point b is sitting so that's omega a b cross r a slash b okay and i could have said that okay hey this term goes to zero because there is no relative velocity and i can actually flip many of these things okay so i can say that this is now velocity of a is velocity of b plus look at this omega a b 
why am i writing it as omega ab it is the angular velocity of the body on which the point b is sitting in the previous expression it is the angular velocity of the point on which the point uh, body on which the point a was sitting okay so that's why it's omega ab and omega ab in both the cases omega ab r a slash b is the same as minus r b slash a or if i rearrange this vb is va plus omega ab cross r b slash a okay so this was a digression uh, but i'm just showing you that i can choose any two points on the body and write the velocity relative to each other okay or any two points on any two different bodies for that matter i will still whatever form i write it i will be able to go from one form to the other or one point to the other okay so i'm going to look at uh, the expression that i hand up with now so which means that a velocity of b is velocity of a which is already known to me if you know that is a uh, root of 2 ax in the i direction okay so this is going to be root of 2 ax in the i direction and then omega ab we had assumed it to be counterclockwise so omega ab k cross r b slash a now i have to do a couple of things okay what is r b slash a look at this okay so i have point b and then i have the point a uh, in the following manner so this is a this is point b and then our b slash a is going to be in this uh, direction here all the way from point a to point b so this is our b slash a which means that i have to travel this way and then i have to travel up okay so that is what i am saying here okay so that is the way the vector components will be written i have a triad which i have sitting right here i j and k okay so this is positive i this is positive j and before i do this i'm going to do a few more things on the problem uh, given to me here um, the total distance is x because of symmetry we can very obviously see that this distance from a to point b is going to be a distance of x by 2 okay and i'm going to call this as the height h okay and uh, you can very well see that uh, the height h the length b and x by 2 form a right angle triangle okay so which which can be shown here as well so this is going to be the height h and then this is going to be a distance x by 2 okay and then the length from a to b um, or b slash a the magnitude is little b which means that h square is equal to b square minus x square by 4 or h is b square minus x square by 4 whole to the power 1 by 2 okay so which means that our b slash a can be written as the following in the vector form i'm traveling to the left which means this is minus x by 2 i and then i'm traveling up plus h j okay which means that our b slash a is going to be minus x by 2 i plus b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the j direction okay and i'm going to throw all of that into the mix because i know that uh, velocity of b is now square root of 2 a x in the i direction plus watch this omega a b k cross this entire term that i have just written down here okay i'm just going to bring that creature uh, copy that and paste it okay which means that i have to perform a cross product and i'm going to show you a trick to perform this cross product very quickly okay so i write my triad i j k okay so this is my triad and then when i do the cross product here is what i do so for example you know look at uh, this uh, cross product here the scalars don't matter much to me okay so maybe i can maybe just one one step uh, more i can write it in the following form okay uh, let me take this and uh, maybe bring it bring it down uh, here okay so one more thing i can do is uh, vb is square root of 2 ax 
in the i direction plus the following okay it's going to be omega a b minus x by 2 k cross i okay so minus omega a b x by 2 times k cross i and then i'm going to have plus omega a b times b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 times k cross j okay so let me make sure my brackets are correspondingly the same and just for this one part I'll, I'll go a little slower but then i'm going to pick up speed as we go further down okay so look at this k cross i k cross i is going to give me j so this entire term is going to become a j and then k cross j i'm going against the grain so which means it's going to become minus i okay so which means and i'm going to end up with velocity of b is equal to square root of 2 a x i and then i'm having one more i term right so which means i can combine the i terms together so i'm going to do that and so that's going to be minus omega a b times b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 this is in the i direction and then i'm going to have minus omega a b x by 2 in the j direction okay so this is what i have for velocity of b on the body a b okay so let me make that line then what i can do further is the following I go back to my figure here and I recognize that, okay, hey, let me look at the link BC. Point B is also a point on the link BC. Okay. So let me look at that. Now point B is also a point on link BC. Right. Which means that uh, look at the link bc and uh, so let us do the velocity analysis on the link bc if i look at the link bc right then b and c are points on the same body okay which essentially means the following right uh, if i look at the relative velocities then they're going to be zero so velocity of b slash c relative is equal to zero and of course the acceleration of b slash c relative is also equal to zero then i bring in my velocity expression i can relate the velocity of b to the velocity of c okay because i'm just relating the velocity of two points on the same body then this is going to be the relative velocity between the two points and then i'm going to have omega of what omega of the body that contains the point c which is going to be the omega of body bc crossed with the relative distance between the points b and c okay and i immediately know that this term here is going to be gone and i also know that the velocity of point c is zero because it's a fixed point and we had already decided on that before and so i can say velocity of b is omega bc which is omega bc minus k crossed with our b slash c okay how to find our b slash c that is fairly straightforward i have point c i have point b i can write the following so this was point c this was point b i know the distance from point b to point c horizontally i know the distance vertically this little distance is little b x by 2 this is height h which is b square x square by 4 all to the power 1 by 2 i'm sorry okay all to the power 1 by 2 or square root and i know that okay this is the position vector okay so this is r b slash c sitting at the point c looking at the point b how do i go there i go to the right which means i'm going in the positive y and then i'm going up which means i'm going in the positive j direction okay so which means that velocity of b is minus omega bck cross 
x by 2i plus b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j okay so that is going to be the position vector where i have used the fact that our b slash c is uh, this uh, position vector right here okay so let me copy that and write that information down here okay so i'm going to simplify this expression once again by doing the cross products so velocity of b is minus omega bc x by 2 k cross i and then minus omega bc b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 k cross j i bring in my triad once again i j and k and it's very obvious to see that k cross i is j k cross j is minus i and if i rewrite my expression now velocity of b is going to be the following minus and minus becomes a plus so this is going to be plus omega bc b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the i minus omega bc x by 2 in the j this is what i have for velocity of b by looking at the link bc but point b is the same point right so i have two equations for velocity of b okay so from a b then from link b c okay from link b c i have this expression here i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste that and then from link a b i had this expression which was previously written down here right so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste that right here which obviously means that those two expressions are going to be the same right which makes sense and so i'm just going to equate those two together okay so if i do that then i end up having the following okay so this essentially implies that root 2ax minus omega a b b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the i direction minus omega a b x by 2 in the j direction this is equal to omega b c times b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the i minus omega b c x by 2 in the j direction that's common sense if two equ equations are the same then they are going to be equal to each other <laughs> okay uh, which means that i can collect all the i terms right look at the terms containing the i that's going to be the following root 2 a x minus omega a b b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 what are the terms containing i on the other side this is going to be omega b c times b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 then terms containing j i'm going to have minus omega a b x by 2 j uh, not the j without the, i don't need to write the j because i'm just equating the terms containing the i's and the j's and on the other side it's going to be minus omega b c times x by 2 okay so this is equation 1 equation 2 it is very obvious that from equation 2 omega a b is the same as omega b c from equation 2 omega a b is the same as omega b c which means that i'm going to take this and substitute this into equation 1 okay so substitute into 1 and here is what you end up getting square root of 2 a x minus omega a b i'm just going to call it as an omega okay so if i just call this as an omega so this is omega b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 this is the same as omega times b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 which means i can solve for omega which means that omega which is equal to omega a b which is equal to omega b c i get a positive value which means that the directions i have chosen are also correct okay so this is important i'm looking at the magnitudes now this is going to be the following 
it's going to be square root of 2 a x all of this divided by 2 times b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 which is also a square root term which tells me eventually which tells me that omega a b which was chosen as omega a b in the k direction is now going to be the following i'm going to take this entire term copy that and paste it here reduce the length of this guy and this is going to be in the k direction and likewise omega bc which was minus omega bc in the k is going to be minus all of this copy that and paste that so that's important that it's a negative sign there okay so these are the final answers for the angular velocity and you can immediately see that they are in terms of a b and x only okay so we have found out the angular velocities exactly the same idea when we find the angular accelerations as well okay there is nothing more to it uh, than what we have been doing so far okay so here is what i'm going to do to speed the process up so now acceleration analysis okay same idea that is look at acceleration of b on link a b look at acceleration of b on link b c equate the two equate the two expressions and this will hopefully give us alpha a b and alpha b c okay so that is what i'm planning to do okay now i'm going to look at a link a b points a and b are on the same body okay so link a b points a and b are on the same body a and b on the same body which implies that v b slash a relative is zero a b slash a relative is also zero one thing that i suggest when you solve these problems is you know have the velocity and acceleration expressions right in front of you as you're trying to solve these problems okay and uh, so with that said i can say okay acceleration of b is acceleration of a then i'm going to have alpha a b or b slash a then centripetal acceleration minus omega square a b or b slash a then i'm going to have a b slash a relative to omega cross v b slash a relative which is going to vanish in a second okay so this term is gone this entire scary term is gone i'm left with only this one and then i'm just going to do the substitutions okay so acceleration of b is acceleration of a which was a a in the i direction alpha a b i had assumed it to be alpha a b in the k or b slash a if you remember from the previous time it was minus x by 2 i and then b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j and then minus omega square a b okay i'm just going to leave it as minus omega square okay minus omega square times the same thing as uh, before okay so this is uh, times uh, there is no cross product for this other term as i'm writing it here okay please make a note of that i guess i did not want to cut it but there is no cross product here okay so look at that there is only one cross product on the previous term but not on this term here if i do the cross products quickly okay and make use of the triad i j and then k write all the cross product terms k cross i is going to give me j k and then j is going to give me if i do the cross product that's going to give me minus i 
okay so be careful there so i'm going to end up with the following acceleration of b is equal to acceleration of a in the i direction k cross i is j and that's what that's going to be minus alpha a b x by 2 j then i'm going to have k cross j is minus i so that's another minus sign minus alpha a b b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the i then i'm going to have minus and minus plus plus omega square x by 2 i minus omega square b square minus x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j okay where omega is the magnitude of omega a b which is the same as the magnitude of omega b c was found earlier okay so this is the expression that i have from link a b do the same thing from link b c okay so link b c what are the things that i see b and c on the same body which implies that velocity of b slash c relative is zero acceleration of b slash c relative is also zero okay and so if i write the acceleration expression acceleration of b is acceleration of c alpha of the body on which the point c is existing so that's bc r b slash c minus omega square of the body on which the point c is there times please notice that is not a cross product there that is a scalar omega square times a vector okay then i'm going to have a b slash c relative to omega cross v b slash c relative and get rid of this guy get rid of that guy acceleration of c is also zero because you know that c is a fixed point okay so which means that i have the following acceleration of b is alpha b c which we had assumed to be clockwise cross r b slash c which i had written in the previous term as x by 2 i plus b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j okay and then minus omega square bc which i'm just going to write as omega square times uh, that entire thing that i have just written down here i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste that down here i just want to make sure this is a cross product okay so that's a cross product k cross i k cross j make use of the same triad as before okay so if you want you can always keep bringing this triad wherever you go put it in your pocket and make sure you're good friends with this triad and so if i write this out acceleration of b is going to be the following k cross i is j so this is going to be minus alpha b c x by 2 j k cross j is minus i i already have a negative sign so this is going to be alpha b c times b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 i minus omega square x by 2 i i will collect the i terms and the j terms and then we will we will do that but let me write this out fully minus omega square b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j okay so these are the terms that i have so from link a b then from link b c okay i have the following accelerations for b accelerations for b from link b c i have this term here okay copy that and paste that then from link a b i had another bigger guy sitting down here copy that paste that okay acceleration of b has to be the same which means that i can essentially say the following okay so this essentially tells me that a a i and let me now start collecting all the i and the j terms together okay so let me do that 
I think we are in a good position for that and uh, so this is going to be a a in the i direction so i'm collecting that term then i'm collecting this term and then collecting that term okay plus omega square x by 2 okay and then i'm going to have one more term in the i direction that's going to be minus alpha a b b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 all of this in the i direction and then the j terms I'm collecting that term collecting that term okay so this is going to be plus minus alpha a b x by 2 minus omega square b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 in the j direction this is all of that there this is now equal to collect all the i terms together there is an i term here there is an i term here alpha b c b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 minus omega square x by 2 okay there is that term this is in the i direction and then in the j direction there is only this term here and then that term there so this is going to be plus minus alpha b c x by 2 minus omega square b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 j all i'm doing is collecting common terms on both sides there is nothing much to what we're doing here okay all right uh, so now moving forward uh, what are we going to do if I look at uh, these things, then I obviously will say that, okay, equate the terms on the i, equate all the j terms on both the sides. What are the terms containing i? So that's all of this creature. I'm just going to copy that and paste that instead of rewriting it again. That's one term. That's equal to all the terms containing i on the other side. That's all of these guys here. All terms containing j. That's going to be this entire big guy right here. Okay. Because I have a vector equation equal to another vector equation. That's essentially two scalar equations because I'm doing this in two dimensions. So that's why I'm having the setup that I have shown here. And then it's going to be equal to this setup here. Copy that and paste that. Okay. So call this as equations uh, three equation 4 okay from equation 4 what do you see you see what your common sense would have told you at the beginning of the problem hey the angular velocities are equal to each other the angular accelerations are equal to each other okay so from this i see that minus alpha a b x by 2 minus omega square b square x square by 4 to the power 1 by 2 is equal to minus alpha b c x by 2 i need to maybe shift this on a little this side shift this guy here and i'm going to get the same thing right down here it is very easy to see that that term and that term cancels off and i can immediately recognize that alpha a b is equal to alpha b c and i'm going to call it as some alpha okay and then all i have to do is substitute this substitute for alpha a b is equal to alpha b c is equal to alpha into equation three and then use omega is omega a b is equal to omega b c which we had found out sometime back i'm going to bring that guy okay so that was also a fairly good looking creature uh, so copy that and bring that down here okay so this was what we had and i'm going to take all of this and substitute this into equation three what is equation three equation three is this entire thing copy that and then paste that okay so i'm going to substitute for that substitute for that into equation three and if i clean up everything i end up with the following okay so after doing the substitutions
you see no numbers were used in this problem this is the type of problem i really love i know probably some of you don't but but i think it is better to get used to it okay so after substitution because you know then i can always substitute any number that i want into the problem it makes it very much more general okay something that i can tackle easily so after substitution i end up getting alpha ab is equal to alpha bc is equal to alpha as um, a plus i'm just going to write it uh, in a nicer uh, form here okay uh, 2ax square divided by um, this is after after all the substitutions have been performed and so on so which is why i'm getting this the x square terms and so on okay uh, then this is going to be 4 uh, let me write this out so this is going to be 4 times b square minus x square by 4 okay without any squares uh, or square root divided by i have the square root terms on the denominator okay uh, divided by the following term okay divided by 2 times uh, square root of b square minus x square by 4 okay so that's the square root term that's coming out there or you can write this uh, for both of these uh, as uh, the following so i'm going to copy this and then eventually i can say alpha a b is alpha a b in the k direction which is going to be equal to this entire big guy in the k direction okay and then likewise alpha b c is minus alpha b c k which is going to be all of this and throw that into the mix with a negative sign okay and uh, that's about the things that we wanted to calculate in this particular problem and as you can see we made use of the general velocity analysis and general acceleration analysis when i started the problem i first made use of the information of the problem when i started the problem i was told if i go back to the problem i was told that the link ad is translating so i know the acceleration of a i know the acceleration of d that's given to me I make use of rectilinear motion equations find the velocity of a then i realize okay hey i'm going to assume some arbitrary directions for the angular velocities and angular accelerations once i do that then all i have to do is just use the equations at my disposal i don't know what to use so i'm just going to use whatever i can i use the velocity of b relative to velocity of a relate the velocity of b to the link c uh, at the velocity of c on link bc then i come up with the fact that okay i'm looking at link ab velocity of b i can obtain from link ab i look at link bc i obtain the velocity of b obviously the same equation so they have to be equal to each other and that's exactly what we have done as we come here okay we've just equated those two velocities and then we were able to find the angular velocity omega as you see acceleration analysis exactly same idea look at acceleration of b on ab Look at acceleration of B on BC, equate the two, you find the angular accelerations and you ended up having them as, after a lot of uh, algebra, after the cross product and so on, you ended up with the following expressions as your answers. Please go over this problem very carefully. Uh, my suggestion is if you really want to get better at it, close down the solutions, try out this problem again keep in front of you the general velocity and acceleration expressions the equations that were derived in the rigid body kinematic analysis that we had performed earlier okay keep those equations in front of you re-derive this entire problem rework this entire problem and i think that will give you a good amount of confidence all right uh, thank you very much and uh, stay safe bye bye